Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gerig. We are talking about labor demand, actually specifically elasticity of demand. And we are on chapter 3, part 8. Before I get started, I would like to underline that please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. This is our channel where I teach you important economic concepts, share some economics news and short form economics research stories. So keep that in mind, number one, don't forget to subscribe because whenever I post a new video, they will pop up in your timeline on YouTube, number one. Number two, you won't miss any uh, econ class again. All right, so let's get started. Elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand measures the change in the price of labor on the quantity of labor demanded. Okay, so let's say I have a business I am producing uh, electric vehicles, all right? So let's say Dr. G cars, very nice electric vehicles, and I am producing these. So what if the wage rate I'm paying for my manufacturing workers went down by 10%? Am I going to hire more than 10%? Increase the hiring by more than 10%? Then you'll have elastic demand. Am I going to keep the uh, hiring the same? No change. Am I going to um, increase hiring by 10% unit elastic? Or am I going to hire by less than 10%? So 10% decline on the wages. Am I going to hire, increase my hiring by less than 10%? That's an inelastic, non-responsive demand. Okay, so elasticity of labor demand. Uh, it's basically delta D. This is elasticity. Greek letter for elasticity, delta D. This is change in, percent change in employment. Percent change in employment divided by percent change in the price of labor, which is wages, okay? So elasticity of labor demand is a negative number. That means wages go up, employment is going to go down. Both substitution and scale effects work. Watch the previous part if you don't understand what I am saying. Wages go down, great. Both substitution and scale effects say that increase your employment. So they move on opposite direction. One goes up, the other one goes down. They move opposite direction means that if this is positive, this is a negative number. Negative divided by positive, negative number. If this goes up, uh, goes down, right? Wages went down, negative number. Employment will go up. Again, positive divided by negative. That's a negative number. So that's why elasticity of labor demand is always a negative number. All right. Elasticity of labor demand is always negative. I just said that. It is downward sloping. It characterizes this downward sloping demand curve. Well, it happens all the time I try to draw. So this is... Oh, gosh. Okay. One more time. Let's try. This is employment. This is price of labor. Wages. <laughs> this is a long run labor demand curve. I don't know what this is happening, um, why this is happening, but don't worry about it. All right. So imagine, um, let's practice a little bit. Let's imagine price of labor was $20 to start with. It goes down to $10. I don't know what's happening. And then employment at first was 30 workers. Now I am, the price went down by half. I actually increased my employment to 56. Let's calculate elasticity of labor demand. So elasticity of labor demand, I'm going to calculate from zero. So the formula is change in employment. That means final employment change, right? Percentage change. Final employment minus initial employment divided by E0 divided by initial, which is E0. Next. Percent change in wages, change in wages, W1 minus W0, put in parentheses, divided by initial wages. Okay, let's plug in everything. E1, 56, minus 30, divided by, in parentheses, divided by initial employment, 30, divide everything by, Final wages 10. So this is why I always write down formula because my brain wants to do the opposite. Minus initial wages 20. 10 minus 20, okay? 
So it's a negative number up here. But my brain always, I have mild dyslexia. So I always try to flip the numbers. Long story. Initial wages, 20, W0. If you calculate this, what are you going to find? 26 divided by 30, divided by negative 10 over 20. I'm going to be just like those cooking shows. We have already calculated everything. Boom. So answer is negative 1.7. So what did we find? What did we find here? What we found is labor demand is elastic. It's greater than one. Okay. It's greater than one elastic. So let us see what this means okay this in plain english means negative 1.0 mean if wages go down by one percent okay wages are going down by one percent employment will go up right by 1.7 percent so this negative sign basically means they're going to move in opposite directions and 1.7 shows the response to a one percent change in wages what if wages went up by 1%, okay? Then employment will go down by 1.7%. Let's make it more meaningful. What if wages went up by 100%? Wages doubled? Ugh. Let's not make it double. Let's make 10%. Wages went up by 10%. Employment will go down by, multiply this by 10, 17%. That's not cool. All right, so let's take a look at the short run versus long run labor demand elasticity. I just want to give you this idea. In the long run, we are more flexible. In the short run, price of labor goes up. You have fixed capital. You're already fixed there. It's hard to adjust your labor. So in the short run, elasticity is lower. In the long run, you can adjust your capital labor together. Elasticity is going to be a little bit higher because you're more responsive. So let me give you an example. Let's say wage rate. So I am talking about a grocery store. In Texas, we have an epic grocery store that we all love. And they do lots of community work during hurricanes. They're excellent. Okay. So HEB, let's say price of workers went up to $200. Let's say minimum wage goes up to $200. I'm making up this number. Okay. HEB doesn't pay minimum wage, but let's say they were paying like $10 per hour to their cashiers. Cashier wage rates for some reason went up to $200. In the short run, it's hard to respond and fire most of the cashiers and re uh, replace it with, you know, those self-checkout uh, cash registers. You have like six, seven of those, plus you put only one worker to oversee them, right? So that's more capital intensive. You can do it in the long run while you adjust your capital but in the short run, you're stuck. You can't respond to a wage increase. In the so that's the difference. In the short run, your labor elasticity is lower, more inelastic, inelastic, compared to long run. Labor demand at last is more elastic. Okay, let's get into the slides. In the short run, we have constraints. You can't adjust your capital. You can only change your labor, okay? So if labor got more expensive, since you can't adjust your capital, you can't drop labor by a lot. You can't fire people a lot, right? Labor demand relatively is rest, less responsive in the short run. It's e inelastic. Inelastic means rest, uh, less responsiveness. Long run, your demand is more flexible. You can adjust both labor and capital freely, okay? So... Labor demand is more elastic in the long run. Remember, you have a labor demand curve. Let's say this is short run. More inelastic, steeper, inelastic, steeper. Elastic, this is more elastic, flatter. Flatter means relatively more elastic. Steeper means relatively more inelastic. So empirical evidence actually support, supports this. And I want to show you, like, in absolute value, long-run labor demand elasticity is larger. 
Um, empirical evidence suggests that short-term labor elasticity ranges from negative 0.4 to 0.5. What does this mean in English? Let's grab 0.4. That means if wages were to go up by zero, uh, 1 percent, if wages were to go up by 1 percent, labor demand would go down, but only by 0.4 percent, less than 1 percent. So it's pretty inelastic. Okay. Long run labor de uh, demand elasticity is a little bit more elastic, right? But it's closer to one. So it's called unitary elastic, okay? So one quarter of this comes from substitution effect. The rest comes from scale effect. Wages go up. You want to scale down, right? You are going to cut production. Therefore, you need fewer labor, fewer capital. Substitution effect says that you... See an increase in wages, increase, uh, increase your capital, substitute away from capital, but you drop labor because labor got more expensive. So substitution effect is a larger determinant. We are talking about what makes up this elasticity of labor demand, two-thirds scale, one-third substitution effect. Should, so this is again another graph, short-run demand curve is steeper because labor demand is more inelastic in the long run your demand curve is flatter less inelastic more elastic if you're interested i can point you to some elasticity videos from principles of microeconomics so again in the long run the firm can take full advantage of economic opportunities introduced by change in wage because you can adjust capital and labor in the long run demand curve is more elastic than the short run elastic means flatter Okay, I just want to teach you one more thing, folks. I think this is really fun and really important. Okay, so I want to teach you something. Extreme case of elasticity. So, draw two indifference curves. This is perfectly... Okay, so this is... Uh, let's say we are talking about labor, employment, and wages. This is a labor demand curve, demand curve... This is a perfectly, 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 I'm going to extend this, inelastic demand curve, <laughs> inelastic, okay, perfectly inelastic means whatever the wage rate is, I li literally need this, these number of workers, I don't care if this worker demands $60, if they demand $5, I have to hire this person. So in my opinion, this could be, for instance, hiring teachers for education, right? Whatever the uh, wage rate of teachers, we need teachers, right? So this is a perfectly inelastic demand curve. The perfect inelastic demand applies to, for instance, medication demand, right? If I have type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, I need my insulin. So I have to have my quantity of insulin here, E0, this is a number. Uh, not insulin, of course, this is workers, but I need that number regardless of how much insulin is. Or uh, I need my EpiPen for my allergy, right? If I get aller severe allergies, I need EpiPen. Perfect, the inelastic, I extended, do you know how like I extended this I? This is to show you the shape inelastic also let's talk about perfectly elastic demand curve so employment wage rate okay so this is a perfectly 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 e who the look what i did elastic perfectly elastic this is perfectly not elastic inelastic this is our perfectly perfect elastic demand curve looks like this I, I I was supposed to make this completely horizontal. Okay, it needs to be a straight line. Boom. This is the demand curve, labor demand curve. So the, you can hire people only at this wage rate. If this wage rate goes up a little bit, you hire nobody. Okay, so imagine like everybody's only paid the same rate. And I will hire as many people as I want. If the wage rate is this level, I won't be hiring people for less and I won't be hiring for people more. It's an extreme case, but perfectly elastic. It's perfectly horizontal. 
And this is how you decide, like, yes, these are extreme cases, perfectly inelastic, vertical, perfectly elastic, like E letter, this is like a froggy, I don't know. So if something is more inelastic, it's steeper. It's not, it's steeper. If something is elastic, it's going to become uh, flatter. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, some little rule to remember. Okay, and I will see you in the next part where we'll talk about Marshall's rules. That's going to be interesting. I'll see you then. Bye.